Hello guys, how are you doing? Today we are going to talk about some interesting topic. You know what? So we learn so many things on the development, maybe serverless, maybe microservices, Java, Node, Nest, but how we can take this into production? Because I mean, we, when we're learning, we are learning all these good technologies, but in a reality, when you go to work on a project, you may have to work on like decade old technologies. I mean, you can't replace everything in overnight. Maybe you are working with the struts, maybe you are working with the spring, maybe maybe with the spring earlier version, right? Maybe even you don't use a maven, right? So that is a reality. So can we like say, no, 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 I don't like to work on this project? No, you're a software engineer. Your job is to do those, right? So, but let's learn how we can apply all those new things, what we learning new, what are the state of our technologies, into those maybe we can replace maybe we can like turn everything is overnight but i'm sure this will make your life easy because i know by talking to many developers many engineers deploying some application is like a pain right so there's a huge pain when we say okay we have to move something from dev to uat or to production like they're like shivering right because they can understand what could go wrong okay so today I'm going to explain to you how you can do the dependency management from dev to QA to UAT to production. Maybe you're working on a very old project, maybe you're working on a new project. So therefore, I am considering three categories, right? The first one, Java-based project with the old technologies, right? So maybe, maybe it starts, maybe spring, old version. You don't use the MA one, right? So without, right? So this is without dependency management framework, right? The second way, Java project with something like a Maven or a Gradle, right? Maven or Gradle. And third one, I'm going to explain you Node or Nest-based project or like TS-based project, how you can uh, take this dependency management of the, uh, these different varieties, right? So once you learn these three, maybe you work with a Python, maybe you work with a Scala, maybe you work with a Go, right? Doesn't matter because once you learn one of these, you can apply this as it is onto your work, right? So to make this more dynamic, I'm going to consider these maybe work on a Kubernetes or a Docker, right? So this may be like basic on-prem servers, right? Because those are the reality, right? We can learn about serverless, we can learn about AWS, we can learn about Azure, but when you go to work, you may have to deal with the on-prem versions, right? On-prem. You don't have a Kubernetes, you don't have a Jenkins, you don't have a CICD, you don't have those luxuries. But how you can get your work, your life easy by applying the dependency management? Let's go with the first one. How usually this project works? Okay, how usually this project works. In this project, you have a directory called lib. Right, you have a directory called lib. So what you do is, if you need a spring, if you need a struts, if you need a spring boot or whatever, right? So you get those uh, jar files and copy into your lib folder. Right, sometimes maybe you are copying, sometimes maybe you are uh, linking from your location. Okay, so the biggest problem with this, this model, let's say dev 1 and dev 2 and developer 3. If you will you know, three different developers, they may have copied different version to their lib folder, right? So when you run on a UAT, UAT may be you're shipping a different version, uh, QA may be you're shipping a different version and maybe probably you're shipping a different version. How you can make sure whatever the versions available on your dev, we go up to the uh, production, right? So here there are multiple ways you can do this. There are enough frameworks also do this, but I'm going to teach you how to do this without any frameworks, okay? How I would do, or something like that, right? But I also personally use a different, different techniques. This is one of them, right? So this is the easiest way you to do it, right? So what usually we do is very first, when we establish a program, right, when we establish a like framework and okay, this is the version we are going to use, we are going to use this Java file, for the log4j we are going to use this version, for this we are going to use this version, for Axel, oh, whatever the libraries you are using, we define the version, right? We usually call this as a bomb. So build of material, okay? I mean, it's not really build of material, but I like that name. 
So this is how it works. Okay. So once everything is established, let's say we have a dot Java file version 1.5.6, b dot Java file 2.7.8, c dot Java file 10.1.6 or something like that. Okay. Once we have all this Java file, we can go for vulnerability scan, right? So you can find a tool online, maybe maybe uh, based on your uh, company, based on if you they have some licensing or if you don't have the if they don't have licensing, you can use a free tool. You can go some vulnerability scan to see are these libraries are safe, right? And you can implement some mock functionalities to make sure these libraries are not crashing each other. Because since you're not using Maven or a Gradle or something like that, there can there's possibility. Uh, let's say a dot Java file need z dot Java file, and also c dot b dot Java file also need a c dot Java file. Right? C z is it? Right? So otherwise you will confuse it with the c. Right? So uh, if you in this case maybe this guy need a version one, maybe this guy need a version two. Now you're confused. How about to use right? So somehow you need to solve those things and then once you scan those uh, all the packages you can make this as a bundle or like a zip file or something like that. Okay. So now you host this zip file on a repository. Right. Let's say this app is a Cosmos app. Right. Cosmos lib version 1.0.0. Okay. So now you tell every developer, hey, when you set up your working environment, what you need to do is you need to install your IntelliJ ID out of Eclipse and make sure you download this Cosmos Lib version 1.0.0 and link into your project. Right? So now every developer will use the same versions. So now when you bundle this, when you come maybe as a WAV file or something like that, you don't send these uh, libraries. What you can do is instead of that to the QA, or a, a UAD, right? Even for the prod, what you do is you take the code from, like in the build operation, what you do is you take the code from the developer or the repository, maybe in the Git, right? And you get this library version, Cosmos Lib 1.0.0, right? And then you put that uh, this library, uh, this library bundle, and compile your project and build your WAV file. In that case, you're making sure no matter what version even though there were some developers replace one of the version right when you compile time it breaks so you know exactly some guy use a different version that's why it's breaking okay so now let's say after one month later you need new jar file right maybe maybe you need x dot uh, x dot jar file you need a 7.6 version right so now let's say i need that jar file what is my responsibility is get this Cosmos lib 1.0.0 and put this x.7.6 java file and run my vulnerability scan again and run my uh, very first like demo project to make sure none of the libraries are crashing each other and then bundle this as a Cosmos lib 1. maybe 1.1.0 or 1.0.1 or depend on how you prefer now this version now every developer supposed to use this as a bundle, right? Nothing harm they use 1.0.0 as long as they don't need the new library, but once they get the pull from the git, things will break, right? So therefore, you're saying, hey, go and use 1.0.1 library, right? So now you host this as a latest on the your repository. So now build process will take not this one, but this one, right? So the important advantage of this is, like if something is breaking, Right. Let's say this new x dot uh, x dot Java file seven point six is breaking your code. Right. You can identify very early when the developer introduced in that. You don't catch this in the later stage. Right. So why this is important? When something is comes up, when some issues is comes up, you don't need to cross check. Okay, is this because of the uh, dev environment has a different version and QA has a different version, UAD has a different version? Because of we don't have a luxury to use the Docker, because your project is too old to use a Docker, or your environment don't have a Docker, or your company don't want to use a Docker or a Kubernetes, so invest on those, right? So you create a, a WAV file manually and deploy to Tomcat or a JBoss. JBoss is not there. Uh, maybe uh, whatever, whatever your application server, right? 
So in that case, this way you can make sure you kind of mimicking what Docker does. You can make sure dev environment, developers environment, which is local environment, dev QA, UAT plot everywhere. We use the same dependency bundle, right? So the, just believe me, this will keep your pain away, right? So there are enough other ways people do to uh, make sure this is working. Some people use this as a like auto download onto the their development pipeline. You can I mean, keep this version, but this idea, what you do is you bundle your version, you make that a zip file, and you raise a developer guideline. When you set up environment, you need to make sure you download this. When this version update, you send a mail to every developer. Hey guys, go ahead and uh, replace your dev, uh, library folder from this version to this version because today onwards we are going to use this version. Sounds good, right? Okay, so that's our first model. In the second model, we have a two variations. One, we use the Maven, right? But we don't use the Dockers. The second way, we use the Maven, but also we use the Dockers, okay? So third, like second variety, second variety of the second version, which uh, if you use a Maven and you use a Docker, I'm covering with the NPM, right? So Maven, if you use something like a Maven, but if you don't use the Docker, instead of that uh, having your bundles manually, what you can do is, you can have a POM file, right? And this POM file have all the dependencies, right? This POM file has all your dependencies, right? All the libraries and dependencies, right? And you post this POM file in a separately, maybe in a Nexus, in your, your uh, local environment Nexus or something like that. Local environment means the on-ramp, right? Nexus or a manual in a Git type of repository or somewhere. Now what you do is, in your project, right? You refer this dependency file under the parent tag, right? Under the parent tag. So now what happens is developers don't control their own versions, right? What they, if they need a new version, they need to talk to architect and or whoever governing this um, dependency, this BOM, and they say, hey, I need this version. What they would do is they would add that to the parent BOM and publish a new version, right? Your test uh, libraries like a J, you need or kind of a, your Spring test or something like that if you're using or a mock or a, uh, some some sort of a libraries, you can use your local because those don't we don't send uh, those to production, right? So therefore you can use it local, but every dependency you use on the production will come from this POM file, right? So that is the advantage if you use using Maven. In the previous version, since we don't have a Maven, we did manually, but now since we have a Maven, we can use the parent POM file model. So then dependencies will come from there, right? And the third way, third way mean, right? It's two variations again. If you have a Java project with the Maven or a Gradle, and if you have a Node project with the NPM or YAML, okay? And we assume this way, we are deploying on a Docker, right? It can be Docker Swarm or Kubernetes, doesn't matter, but for assume we, we use a Docker. What we can do is, Right. So now if it is a yarn, you have a package JSON. If it is a maven, you have a POM file. Okay. You know how to replace that each other. Right. So now what we do is we create a Docker file, right. From, let's say, I'm, I'm going to explain this one. So you can map to this one from node, right. Node latest. Okay. We get the node latest. And then we copy this package JSON file. Right, if it is a Maven POM file, right? If it's a Maven, this is a Java, right? POM file. And now you run you run npm install command. Okay? So now what this would do is this will download all the packages, all your uh, npm packages with node, all the Java files if it's a Maven, and of course if it is a, a Maven, it's a Maven install, right? And then this will be your Docker. Okay, let's say again a Cosmos. We save this as a Docker build minus T Cosmos base, right? And from here. So now what this will do is it will create a Docker file. It will create a Docker, another Docker file. It will create a Docker with all these dependencies, right? So now whatever the versions you are using, you decide to use on the project. Whatever the version you sign off will be in this Docker, right? So all your services. All your services will use the Docker file like this, right? From Cosmos Base, right? 
from Cosmos Base, right? And then you copy your code, right? Copy your code, right? And you don't do the npm install, you just say npm run build, right? Dependent on your whatever uh, you're using, npm run build. So now what you do is, it will take, I mean, you have to do this switch into the, uh, the location, like you use a location and everything, but in simple, what it does is, it take all those npm uh, or jar files as a base image, so developer will not be able to install anything their own, right? Let's say they install something, right? So let's say if it's a node application, they use something like a moment or some sort of a library locally, and they got it work, right? So now they're so happy, they push to the developer branch. And the develop pipeline, what it will do is, it will pull this image, which don't have a moment, and when the compile time, it says, hey, hey, I'm, I can't compile this because you're using something called moment and you don't have it, right? So that time, you need to talk to your team who's maintaining this uh, Docker file and make sure uh, it's added to their base file, right? So why we don't need to do this? Why we not allowing developers to add their own dependencies? Here's the thing, right? So most of dependencies you use a Maven or an NPM are open source. That means sometimes maybe individual developer control that, maybe sometimes team of developers, right? So usually we don't see who uh, implement this, we just use it. The risk is if tomorrow, if they introduce some bug to this, right? Not purposely, but if, if something happened, if you're using the latest version, right? Uh, if, if you're not controlling the version numbers strictly, if you use the latest version and then that, that bug will come to your code and your code will crash. Even if it is not, let's say you are, you are injecting version, right? You are, let's say you are using 7.2.6, right? If they want, if they want, they can remove the current version from here and publish new version as the same to 6.2.6, .6, right? So when you run the next build script, you will crash. Why? Because they have changed the code or they have introduced a bug, right? Because, I mean, in theoretically, you don't, I mean, they shouldn't do that. But you can control them, right? It, it's some third party. If you remember, uh, during the, uh, when the Ukraine war started, one of the open source library, and they introduce, um, purposely, they introduce a bug. Actually, they remove the code and publish in the same motion. So, millions of applications uh, went offline because of this issue, right? So, therefore, it's always good, before you start, you get whatever the version you are using right now, do the vulnerability scan, do the proper security check, and then create those as a Docker image from there onwards, and you can use the same thing, okay? If you need me to do an example of this, implement this in the real world, and show this with the real world uh, app, just comment below, and I will do that for you. Then, I think one of your pain is going away. Okay, talk to you soon in the next video. Stay safe. Take care.